Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister, how are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm great. I'm doing alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, sister. Jazakallah khair for joining us today in the Naqabi Diaries. Sister, could you please introduce yourself for us and tell us a little bit about what you do? Um, this is uh, Nadi Nashraf, also known as Hamna Naddim. Mm -hmm. I am from Karachi, Pakistan. And uh, I am a multi-dimensional uh, kind of personality. So I'm not doing any one thing at the moment. I, I am doing different things from different fields. Like I am an educationist also. So I'm doing my MPhil uh, in teacher education because I train teachers. And um, I am also a therapist. I counsel people on their relationships, on their um, career on their personal problems, life coaching, etc. And also I am a computer a com community service provider. So I am running an NGO in Karachi with the name of Hamna Nadim Foundation. And I'm trying to help people around me uh, through this and trying to solve their problems. Maybe it's a medical problem or any emergency or uh, it, it's related to the groceries or rents or anything which uh, is bothering them and they are not able to uh, cope up with because we know that there is a problem almost in all countries and more problems in Pakistan or countries like Pakistan because they are still developing so um, the problems are more people are not uh, doing so good or as good as they should be so uh, people like us uh, try to solve problems by connecting donors and by connecting um, resourceful persons with those people who are in need. So um, that's what my introduction is. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. So inshallah, I'll, I'll ask you some more questions about some of those things later on because that just sounds amazing. You obviously do a lot of work, especially in the community, which mashallah sounds amazing. So um, sister, can I ask you, um, what made you want to wear the niqab? Um, what made me? I I even don't know because it started uh, with a thought because uh, that I joined Facebook mm -hmm. around 10, 11 years ago. It was very much new uh, in Pakistan and um, I was at that time uh, running my own brand because I am a fashion designer as well by hobby, uh, not by profession. So I was designing dresses and I was promoting the idea on Facebook that, uh, through Facebook, that uh, this designing and the fashion, uh, this, uh, this terminology is not related to being naked. And uh, the fashion is very much in clothes and very much in covering the body. And I was, I was not a hijabi, I was um, simply, if you have seen Pakistani women, they wear shalwar kameez and mm -hmm. uh, dupatta. Mm -hmm. And dupatta was also not that um, a proper one, but I was just uh, wrapping it around uh, simply. But um, I was trying to promote in the outer world when I was told that Facebook is a platform where if you put something, it is reaching the whole world. It was a very, very new idea for me. And I was like amazed almost. I was mesmerized with this idea that, okay, whatever I am talking, whatever I am telling is read by other people from other countries, from other religions, maybe majority who are not from Pakistan. So I was trying to um, communicate that what Pakistani culture is, what Pakistani women wear, and what Islam is expecting, what is the dress code, because it's not that uh, we are awkward or we are backward or we are conservatives, whatever the text we get. So um, I tried to find out the authentic hadith um, and then some um, Quranic verses to support my idea that covering is the, the real fashion or the real trend, because uh, being naked is from the people who were from caves so like it it's take you back to the uh, which you can say the, the cave, um, cave days yeah so it it's not uh, it's it's not um, prosperity or it's not uh, you can say um, going forward yes yes it's 
it's not going forward when you are reducing your clothes yeah. even men or women and i am always talking about men and women equally because they both need to cover their bodies mm-hmm. and in proper way so i introduced and i was uh, like uh, i used to start talking with my clients with people who would like connect to me through my page uh, that what is pakistani clothing what is this concept what is islamic clothing and then okay hijab is the islamic clothing i said no is hijab is part a niqab or burqa is just part or maybe one kind of dress but islamic clothing has a whole definition because islam is not a religion it is a constitution so it has laws for everything whatever you do so when it comes to your clothing the laws are given that this 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 point should be followed if you want to be uh, called as islamic uh, design or the islamic dress uh, carrier so they were like amazed really that there is a code and i said yes there is a code just like 2004 so i tried to introduce it and that was my um, a uh, point of fame you can say or point of acceptance that people understood that okay the dress couldn't be a uh, fit the dress couldn't be uh, too much tra- uh, like um, um, glittery or appealing or uh, transparent mm-hmm. and it's for all like um, and there were like stitching values that how it should be stitched and which fabric should be used and how long should it be because there was a trend that everybody was wearing long veil long trail kind of dresses which were like dragging on the floor and they were like it be uh, put this much trail put this much trail on my dress and i used to tell them that this is guna if the clothes is dragging on the floor mm-hmm. it's not islamic clothing so first i used to offer them and then i used to um convince them that okay let's reduce it because once we are friend and once we have understanding so people can understand okay when hamna is suggesting so she must be suggesting a good or correct thing so i used to first create understanding with my clients friendship with my clients and then after having trust i used to tell them okay this is not good let's reduce this or let's change this to this there was a there was a lady who was muslim from pakistan who's living in usa since maybe um, by birth or what but she used to order me always she, i love your dresses i love your designing but i need this much of the neck and from back and from front so i used to tell her that no i i, I can't do that so um, just because ki she loved my fabric and my stitching and my styles and everything so she said okay you can reduce it then you know we come to a middle point ki i am making for you so you should be like respecting my uh, uh, whatever the rules i have made for my brand and that is the um, uh, you can say the image of hamna nadeem's brand mm-hmm. uh, since then so uh, what happened that then my world got expanded and i used to meet i used to go i used to exhibit i i i did um, shoots i i did um, fashion shows uh in the mainstream but then i realized and then i was like pointed out that okay this is also not islamic because people are watching not clothes but the women or men mm-hmm. so i then um i put a break on that and i stopped doing shoots and then shows and gradually this business is all about show off and showing and showing and showing so obviously the response was less i started using dummy and then um dummy was my model uh, mm-hmm. the the mannequin yes. was my model so and it had no face it had nothing it it had no head at, <laughs> at all <laughs> so this also but then i noticed that people like my my fan following was growing like crazy i i had 85000 followers on facebook at that time and i was like uh, already only one or two years old on facebook uh, not even two years old so i i realized that every kind of person ev- from every walk of life from every education background every country every religion they, like they are they ca- mixed kind of follow, uh, followership i have but people were like um, oh you have such beautiful lips oh you have such beautiful eyes and you look so beautiful i i was like i am not beautiful and why they are like praising me because i am an average kind of person i i am not ugly i am not beautiful i am the average kind of face which i i i judge myself as and i was like okay now this is going beyond my 
uh, boundaries which I have set for myself because I don't allow others to compliment myself, even though I was not in hijabi. So um, what I did, I started uh, using dupatta in a different manner, uh, just folding it like when we use it in our sala. Mm -hmm. So uh, then it was also not working, and then. I discussed it with my husband and he said, okay, if you really want to do it, because uh, then you can't leave it. It's not like that you do it for two days and then you said, okay, I'm leaving it and I can't because I had a respiratory problem that if I'll wear this, I, I never had anything on my nose, you know, so mm -hmm. it was like very hard for me. And for a few days, it was like, okay, I can't breathe. And then I, I used to drop it down a little and then I breathe and then I put it back. So it was like a, <laughs> a, always a challenge for a few days, even weeks. And then I gradually, um, I become used to a fit. And then today is the thing that when I'm in hijab and people say, okay, there is no man over here. Nobody's watching you. What happened to you? I said, no, I'm, I'm comfortable. It's like now a part of my body. So I don't feel it's there anymore. Unless I, 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 uh, sometimes I buy or I make wrong kind of hijab. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's it's problematic that I I chose just because of the design or the uh, the the print. I chose a bad fabric. So sometimes it's a problem. Otherwise, it's not a problem. It's just like part of my attire. I I feel more comfortable. Even sometimes, uh, whatever I'm wearing, I wear hijab on that. Whatever. So it's. It's, um, you can say it's very easy for me now. I, I have also been complim complimented for this. I have been contacted for this. How you started, your husband forced you, or your father forced you. I said nothing like that. Even my father said, what happened to you? What are you doing? And if you are doing, then will you be continuing it? And they also tell me, if, if you don't feel like any time, you can leave it. It's, it's on you. Because your health is first. I said, no, it's now it's okay. Because they knew that I have a problem. I can't breathe or I get a BP low at any time. So I, I need air. So, but it, it worked. Alhamdulillah, it worked. Alhamdulillah. And then people, then people used to compliment, inbox me. They, they said, okay, so there are like plenty of messages that ladies actually uh, inboxed me and said that, we saw you and then we saw you're working that you are a designer and you are walking on the ramp with the hijab and then what happened like this is all yeah, like 360 change and then when you can do it do, do this in this industry we can do this also we just are like housewives or we are teachers or I am I am this this person I, I am not even into the main uh, showbiz kind of thing so I said why not and then people started and then they used to tell me, okay, okay, I have started this and I'm inspired with you. So it was very much a complimenting and very much rewarding journey in terms of dunya as well. Even men used to compliment and they said, okay, we, we salute you. We give your example to our family, people, like ladies that, okay, when she's doing everything with hijab, you can do also. They're like, there's no excuse. Yeah, yes, I, I sometimes I understand and I also talk about this thing that, okay, because of hijab, my opportunities were cut down. They were, they were snatched. Sometimes they were like, they were, uh, I was being told in my face that you can't participate in this, this, this activity because you are a hijabi. Mm. So once you uh, like put it off for maybe two hours, then we'll take you. So I said, no, it's not possible. So, uh, yes. And even for jobs, I was like judged. I was rejected before hijab. I was all accepted. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's hard on that part, but I'm happy for with all the, 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 the positive one, but the positive side is, uh, stronger or heavier than this. So I'm an entrepreneur. Alhamdulillah. I am on a better place <laughs> more than job. MashaAllah, that's quite amazing. So basically, because of like the amount of attention you was getting on your, yeah. in your fashion business, you decided to, you was what you said, you started to wear hijab, but you mean you was wearing niqab, like you was covering your face as well, like full hijab? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your face okay. I was, I was actually going, I was in a, in a market buying some clothes from a client and I was talking to my husband and then two ladies, I don't know them. And they were like, uh, I was discussing and it was like the, the idea was going on. Huh? 
I was I was in the struggle. What to do? What to do with such people? I delete comment. I strictly I have a strict policy on my Facebook. People know that Hamna will get offended mm-hmm. if we'll comment personal on personal things. So there was very little of this kind of um, behavior. But still, I was worried. Maybe some people are not saying anything, but they are watching my lips or my nose or my cheeks or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they should concentrate on my design more or my work more. Uh, my efforts or whatever I'm sharing on my Facebook. I was using Facebook mainly for uh, the promotion of Pakistan image and for the promotion of Islam image that what Hadith says, what real Hadith is on this topic or what real Ayat is on this topic because too much misconception was there at that time. It was 2008 oh, or, uh, and uh, like people were talking about okay, this country is trying to burn Quran and that country is trying to burn this. So I was like I was more about that, just designing and this fashion, everything came afterwards. Uh, that was not my primary um, uh, motive. But then uh, one day when I was discussing all these, uh, my feelings with my husband and in the middle of a market, I was buying clothes and I was saying, okay, why, why this is happening and what should I do? And if I go, will I be, do, will, will I be like able to carry on with this and all? I said, okay, you can try, you can see maybe an easy kind of, I said something should be very easy and you know, a, a style which is easily um, rap, rapping or in like you can use it very in an easy way because I'm not very technical person, too many pins and too many locks and everything. Mm-hmm. And when I am not in uh, uh, good health, I can remove it in within seconds. So I, I was like thinking very logically and rationally so that I can see all my exit points if I am not well. Yeah. So he said, we were dis- discussing and there were two uh, young, maybe uh, college students or university students, tall girls, beautiful girls. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were watching to our, like listening to our discussion and they said, no, 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 aisa kuch nahi hota, nothing happens and you will not faint and see we are wearing and they were maybe, uh, if you have heard of Al Huda uh, mm-hmm. International, this is very um, well known organization and they are working worldwide. So they said, okay, we are uh, Dr. Farhat Hashmi's students and yes. let's see what we are wearing and see we are wearing abaya as well. And now I said, what will happen if you will feel like you, your BP is low? Or she said, okay, we'll just remove one pin and it will be all gone. And I said, why? How it can be possible? You are just all wrapped up. They literally in the middle of the market, they gifted me a scarf and their pins and everything like from the nearby shop mm-hmm. and they wrapped me and they told me, see, this is done in one second. And I was like, that easy? She said, yes. And then she asked me, okay, now do it. Then I did it twice and thrice and she said, okay, perfectly. And now, and I was, I still remember that day and today as if it happened yesterday because now I wear hijab without even mirror because I know, okay, okay this is, the, you know, it's, a, it's on my fingertips, <laughs> very easy. Yeah, and I can eat also, I can breathe also. It's very easy kind of, if you can see my photo in mm-hmm. my profile, this is very easy kind of wrap up and not very uh, difficult or technical kind of one. So I suggest everyone to do this kind of, even I teach people. So the share goes to those two girls as well. MashaAllah, that's amazing. You'll have to show me how to, how to do it as well, actually, because I'm interested. Yeah. Sure. Alhamdulillah. Um, so did you, do you feel that you had any obstacles? You've already mentioned, obviously, in the profession that you was in, in the fashion industry. Um, apart mm. from that, do you feel there was any real obstacles for you to, um, to you wearing the niqab? Not uh, in terms of family or friends, but yes, fashion industry and people related to fashion industry literally used to inbox me. They used to give me bad remarks. They used to judge me that, okay, you have gone extremist or maybe you know, somebody is feeding you what happened to you and you look so beautiful you're so uh, because i am tall uh, they 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 used to pass compliments uh, the way that i would feel that okay maybe i am i am uh, putting myself down or maybe on a lesser uh, place on a beautiful beauty scale mm-hmm. so they they uh, judged me in that way also they tried to convince me almost Okay, see, uh, you are like uh, better than that model. You are better than that model. You look perfect. And why is you have to make, like you are not a model and you are not going to any showbiz uh, like you are not going to any drama or any film. 
but still uh, you should be presentable when you are a designer and i said no i am presentable the definition of presentable is subjective and it's uh, as per people's own thoughts for me i am presentable for our society maybe i know uh, like unfortunately past islamic country especially it's not presentable i don't know who set those standards for us because this is not presentable that when i am sitting in a reception chair and everybody is watching me and greeting me oh hi hamna how are you you're looking pretty nice lips color like nice eye makeup so this is not the uh, level of being presentable i often um, talk and write about on my profile about this majority disagree with me because they think that okay if we agree we'll be having this you know next step is okay now cover yourself mm. so maybe they are in, in a denial or maybe i am too much for them and my demand is too much for them because i tell them that it's necessary because covering face is not necessary i know it's it's not mandatory i understand but still on on uh, platforms like social media when we are posting hundreds of selfies videos we are meeting people we are going to meetings uh, there are also photos when we are going to any uh, dinners even for fundraisers even for fashion uh, exhibitions anything so we meet people we meet friends there are selfies when then we po- post on facebook and then photos goes from here to the end of the the other end of the world so you need to be extra safe on that side as well but here is the system that people think that if you are in the fashion designing industry you should not be wearing sleeves you should not be wearing complete pajamas you should not be wearing complete neck so they are cutting down the dresses i don't know why because i i see when i see international fashion shows and i was like watching closely now i have not uh, i have left it uh, like around one year ago or two years my i think around more than one year that i am not uh, watching them closely but mm. i used to say that their clothes are more covered than pakistani fashion ramp i, I am amazed that this is pakistan fashion ramp and this one is paris fashion ramp or london fashion ramp they are using more clothes because i have noticed i have seen and i can prove it that the more fabric is used in a design mm. in any international cha- in any brand it is more expensive like the lesser fabric the lesser price yeah so do, they don't understand that the cost of the price the cost of the dress is going up because of the fabric why they they should be promoting it or they should they should be like they should be telling that okay this is this is less <coughs> less important <coughs> less friendly but big brands like big brands the major brands of the world are uh, selling the dresses which have full sleeves on almost double prices why subhanallah so sister they don't understand do you feel um have you have you traveled anywhere while wearing the um niqab as well and how's that how's your experience with that been did you do any traveling uh, during the when you was in fashion and things like that yeah people used to gaze me at like in a in a bad manner they uh, we can say staring mm-hmm. uh, like making faces or avoiding selfies or avoiding photos uh so that i'm not in those photos i'm not in their selfies or did the behavior changed a lot subhanallah hello yes how oh, you still there sorry i thought it cut off okay so um would you would you say that um from your experience do you think that the sisters who wear the hijab get treated sisters the differently would you say that sisters who wear the hijab get treated differently from sisters who wear the niqab like the face veil have you seen any difference in between those very much difference those who wear niqab those who wear hijab those who wear a mixed kind of this the new fashion is tight skin tight fit jeans and a small t-shirt with a hijab all over the head and a hump like a camel so that is a different category they are accepted and they are admired by this fashion industry and all the liberal so called liberals but uh, because that is not even you know 
uh, covering the body. It's more of the exposing thing because the other other dress parts are like their their the bodies, their hips, their waist. Everything is you know too much of the fit and too much of the on the exposure side. Mm -hmm. So that is okay with them. They are okay. She is, she knows how to dress up. Actually, I think that being in a loose dress or in a um, you can say a more covered kind of dress is not that appealing or it gives them a gesture especially after these events which happen in the world mm -hmm. that they think that okay we can um, um, excuse me like we can um, judge them and they must be from that particular extremist group even though even though it's not even proved and it's all an agenda and the propaganda and most of it is propaganda and lies but still people are giving it too much weightage and on the basis of that uh, hijabis are not respected uh, as they should be uh, I feel that men more respect hijabis than women themselves they um, they judge more us women are judging more than men you mean that you mean men respect uh, when you say men respect hijabis more? Do you mean the sisters wearing mm. niqab? Yes, niqab or even even scarf covering heads covering their bodies properly. Mostly. I have seen I have seen people hijab. respecting them more, mm -hmm. and they say, okay, we want our families to wear it like you or him or uh, for, like her or that lady, but they don't listen to us. They just don't listen. Yeah, subhanallah. So do you, do you, have you met any sisters who um, have wanted to um, wear the niqab, for example, but they're not allowed to wear it for because their families are stopping them or somebody's stopping them from putting it on? Yes, there, there are uh, ladies who approach me that in our family, my ma mother and father had told me that you can't wear hijab until you get married. Mm. After marriage, you can decide. And I don't know after marriage, maybe my husband will not allow me. Yeah. So what will happen? So why they are not allowing? I said, maybe they are worried about your marriage. Maybe think that if you are in a hijab, you won't get married soon because you need to go to weddings. You need to meet people. You need to be seen. Your face should need to be As per our society, which is all messed up, it's not, the, it's not on the values and the, uh, the system which should be there. So mm -hmm. it's all messed up. You need to go to a wedding if you want to get married or you need to socialize if you want to get married and if you are in hijab no man will see your face when they'll not see your face they'll be always afraid that maybe she's beautiful or not yeah. uh, should i marry her or not like people marrying or selecting a person inside hijab are very rare that okay i don't want to see your face i just like because you are a hijabi it's very rare mm. it's rare so parents are uh, worried about their kids and some are literally they say okay if you will wear hijab we'll be tagged as um, extremist it will be difficult for us to travel mm -hmm. it will be difficult as for us to get visas especially when there is a hijab and plus pakistan or hijab plus afghanistan or hijab plus india or hijab plus iran so it's like it's the double negative on the visa part so that's also plus good universities good in the inverted commas good universities don't um, prefer hijabis that okay they are coming and studying but they have also a policy on that that okay they have hidden policy they don't tell now they're uh, what what can i say we are more of the munafics because what's written on the ads that we are equal opportunity provider mm. that sentence is the major 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 lie in the whole society because when they are equal opportunity provider they judge you from your appearance when you walk in for the interview and then they tell you sorry you couldn't make it sorry uh, we'll let you know when we need you so it, it's taken it's taken into account they don't tell us but it's taken into account because you will never see a hijabi and in their system and you can't say that okay all hijabis are stupid and they couldn't uh, fit their criteria so in multinational, in big post, in big companies, in big um, names, you won't find 
uh, hijabis proper hijabis you won't you will find those um, half deer half lion kind of people who are wearing like a, like two weird kind of skinny and tight jeans mm -hmm. and with uh, a hump on their head in the name of hijab yeah, so that is also that's okay because that's giving them okay uh, some kind of entertainment maybe mm. have you have you met any sisters who have been forced to wear the niqab on the other hand no not so far nobody approached me for that because people approach me how to start how yeah. can i convince one man uh, approached me for her sister and she uh, she uh, was uh, admitted to uh, she was in a islamic university mm -hmm. and she was uh, becoming an alma but uh, she wanted to stay in the hostel and then uh, the boy was saying that my my sister uh, is going to like study and it's in karachi but uh, she will be away for like months because she needs to stay there becoming an alma as a full day and full months job so i said it's i don't think so it's because it's since an islamic university i don't think so it's islamic to stay without mehram overnight in a place where there your mehram is not there in that building mm -hmm. so he said it's all women university it's all women i said no it's not like i don't think so it's as per my knowledge it's not possible so people come to me for suggestions for alternatives and for like confirmations also sometimes uh but never they said it okay my husband is forcing me but yes people ladies came to me that my husband is forcing me i'll divorce you if i'll not if you will not dress the way i want because you need to be uh you know fit for the society and the people i'm meeting you are not presentable i can't take you as my wife in front of my friends and my colleagues so they wanted a uh, show piece and that lady was not uh, ready Yeah. and she was feeling bad that what's happening to me and my own husband is asking me yeah. to leave hijab and i am a hijabi he married to me he he knew that i am a hijabi then i now he wants me to be presentable and get mingled with the yeah. friend circle so all the wives are doing this so why not you all other wives of my friends are doing this so why not you subhanallah subhanallah so um have you uh, sister what would you advise um to anybody who wants to start to wear the niqab um but they're not sure about it well, she will be another hamna nadim because i was not sure about it mm -hmm. and i started i just started and i was in the middle of the discussion and allah sent me those ladies who told me in the middle of the market in front of all men all the market people who respect me a lot a lot even though i was not a hijabi but i was a moderately uh, modestly uh, uh, covered woman but they they used to respect me because i am covered i am respectful and i am trustworthy because i never delayed their payments or anything they always take me as sisters mm -hmm. they respect me and they were so much happy because it all happened in front of those all strangers and na meram but they were all happy and since then today i have not left hijab uh, i get i get sick i sometimes i get low bp and everything but that's okay you need to stay at home you just need to get hydrated but it's not because of hijab it's because of my working uh, stress my 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 uh, routine too much of the things as i said i'm uh, diversely Uh, involved in too many things mm. like i am doing designing for my private clients i'm not doing it like publicly anymore but my clients are there they still want hamna nadim uh, dress mm. so i am making dress for them i am providing community service i am teaching teachers how to teach and i am also counseling people on their relationship sometimes they had a they had a fight with the husband mm. or wife or they had really a problem with mother and or they have career counseling queries or something students are not like going good in their universities or they are stressed or bullied or something so i am helping them so that stress is bringing my like you know uh, health down or maybe i am i am uh, i have i am having a low bp or dehydration it's not about the hijab it's certainly not about the hijab balki mm -hmm. i have been told and i have read this several places that hijab keeps your body temperature uh, low like you stay uh, cool 
yeah if you are wearing hijab or something that fa- extra fabric is keeping your head cool and uh, you have a good temperature when you are covering yourself even men uh, we have noticed that uh, people from desert or hot places they cover their heads with okay. some okay. fabric even men they cover their uh, they don't they never uh, move with the naked head yes because it will keep them cool so it's good i will suggest them just to start and take a uh, easy um video uh, tutorial from any youtube mm-hmm. simple or maybe some day maybe because it's it involves you know face so i i i am i don't know otherwise i would have maybe on the scarf i'll wear a scarf and then i'll do it again on the scarf so i'll tell them how to sometime i'll i maybe i'll post a video or i'm sure there there must be a video on it all uh, already they can watch it and they can start and use pure fabric uh 100% cotton 100% silk so that will never uh, give them rashes or any breathing problem mm-hmm. and uh, they can use fabric as per the temperature of their area but they should wear it it's it's very good for their health for their even you know this this pandemic this covid this everything hijabis are more safe <laughs> yeah mashallah <laughs> <laughs> then others because we already have a mask on our face alhamdulillah so now the people are you know wearing everything they are covering ears our ears are covered our face is covered even if we touch we touch our hijab so we don't touch our ears or nose and lips or face so it's you know it has so many plus points <laughs> and they, even those people who couldn't afford a mask because they got very expensive and they got short in market in every country it happened that they were not available because there was a sudden demand of this thing so many muslim and non muslim ladies and even men started doing hijab <laughs> <laughs> they shared their photos that okay now we are doing hijab and it's uh, it's covering our head and everything we are using a scarf we are using a scarf i said okay you call it a scarf or you call it a hijab uh, it's okay but use it <laughs> Mashallah. So finally sister to end this interview I'm going to ask you what does inaqab mean to you personally? It it gives me a sense of uh protection to be honest because when I'm in a meeting when I am in front of anybody I am not worried anymore I used to wear high high necks you know in my even my shalwar kameez or even my dresses I used to get and my my tailor was like why you always have to get the same neck every time like try some other design i said no i need this because i i need to cover my neck and then there is a hook or button near my neck mm-hmm. so even there is summer or winter or whatever so they said how can you wear this because i was too much conscious about my uh, neck and the upper chest portion so that if i am leaning or if i am you know talking to somebody working i should not be exposed or maybe by mistake anybody could see me or my parts so uh, now i am very much relaxed because the scarf is there even if my neck is uh, not that covered even it is round or v style mm. or anything mm. i am not worried because the scarf is there and my neck my my chest my um, ears everything is covered and uh, i am relaxed when i am relaxed i am totally concentrating on the work which i am doing or meeting or talking whatever i know nobody is watching my lips i am not conscious about my face i am no more conscious about my any other body part mm-hmm. and i am more you know focused yeah. so it's a sense of protection for me i feel very much um, relaxed i even go in the field as community service is like getting too much of it i am like you can say um, most of my time is going in community service now mm-hmm. it's getting more importance in my life day by day it's increasing so i have to deal with you know people of slums and uh, they are not educated they are not well mannered they are not even mannered well mannered is a very different thing they are not even mannered they don't know how to see how to st- talk or what so i am very much uh, you know comfortable now even there are thousand men so mm-hmm. i am comfortable and i feel like a, I, i feel like uh, covered and protected and i feel okay and they then there is a message also uh, what my husband says that when somebody is coming in front of you or from like from your front so you automatically it's a it's a 
human psychology also that you automatically build a um a judgment or a, a, an opinion about that person that what kind of person she or he must be it could be wrong or it could be right but then the dress is the main thing or the attire or the the personality is the the main thing which gives you the idea because right now you have not talked you have not dealt so the thing is the parents the main thing is the parents mm. so he always tell, uh, says that whatever you are wearing gives the first impression okay this is this kind of lady or man and these should be the boundaries that i should be first uh, conversating with him or her so let's see how it goes about and then i will move forward to the next level of free shape or whatever so when you are coming in a hijab or when a person is coming in a beard or a topi or a, a shalwar kameez or a jubba or a sari so that opinion is made made as per the attire so i have noticed that when i used to work earlier people used to respect me but now they they are more afraid of me <laughs> they think that amna will get offended if we'll say a little you know mm-hmm. out, out of the track thing yeah. they the, the respect level is now different that respect was of the honesty or anything but now respect is of the maybe she is a too much religious and we should be you know in our limits so that also gives me an extra protection that people understand that this lady coming with this attire can yeah or will not uh, allow us being you know free and having jokes or something i am very witty i do jokes i i give them i give everybody a very relaxed kind of um, gesture and environment so that they talk to me because i'm a therapist also so i i think that okay they should talk their heart out mm-hmm. but still i i have drawn an imaginary boundary around me so that is you know always there friends family unknown people everybody they know that okay these are certain things that she will never 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 allow so that is also an extra protection for me so hijab you know gives me an additional protection of physical and of the psychological um, understanding from the others so yeah. they make a good judgment about me uh, when they are dealing with me they are more you can say mohtaat uh, they are more careful they are more um, um choosy about their words mm. because they they always think that okay we should be moderate they don't get uh, too much free in first or second meeting with me so that uh, you know there is a respect there yeah, alhamdulillah the other side who don't like me or they they judge me and they think that i'm not presentable i don't deal with them anymore mm. i don't go to them they 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 work they sit with the people uh, who are like minded and i sit and work with the people who are like minded so i don't now give them much importance i don't give them much weightage in my life anymore because i understood that they they one day they will convince me to leave hijab what anyhow you you will not even imagine that a, a designer a very well known pakistani jewelry designer told me in my face that do you know what hijab means hijab in pakistan means that that this lady is a prostitute really? so those ladies uh-huh. yeah so those ladies standing there 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 that 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 area have you seen those ladies i said yes i have seen them and i know that they wear hijab mm-hmm. and i know that how they wear hijab and i know why they are standing there so there is no point of telling me but my uh, appearance and their appearance is you know a 360 difference mm-hmm. you cannot like 180 difference they are east and i am west they wear hijab but then they they decorate their hands they wear abaya but then they decorate their feet mm. so that their hands and feet could tell the people that okay we are available i am not decorating my hands and my mm-hmm. feet i i even don't wear nail polish so what you are saying what you are comparing have you do you have any senses what your age and what you are like because she wanted to convince me or or maybe harass me so that i could feel you know oh this will people will think about me okay i should leave it you know getting yeah. no, no, no. discouraged and and afraid of any future and then allah 
Allah hai, Allah, Allah is the best planner. He, as he said in the Quran, that He is the best planner. So what happened that literally I have no connection with my husband's friends. Literally no connections, and with the people who he is working with or meeting with, unknown, completely stranger people. So it happened that my husband maybe. Uh, out of uh, respect or love or maybe just because of telling that oh my wife is this 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 oh my wife is doing this 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 so maybe he introduced to me in my absence to some people and they said that Hamna Nadim who wears hijab is your wife and they said yes and they said, oh she's very kind lady oh she's very respectful and she's very respected and unknown people like unknown people he used to compliment to my husband and he used to tell me at home that today that person do you know him I said no you, have you met him? I said no. So I I was also not understanding what's happening. You know, at that time Allah was balancing that situation that those um, so-called liberals were convincing me how pretty I am and I should leave it and why should I leave it and it will be damaging my image and my my future and my prosperity. My path will be slowed down and everything. And the other hand, my husband was bringing me news every day uh, that this person from there and he's this he's doctor or he's a real estate agent or he is a, 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 a businessman they were talking about you and I said she's my wife so I was like Allah is giving me respect then why should I be afraid of these things if people think that I'm bad they will think even if I am wearing nothing mm -hmm. or wearing everything so if it is meant to be then it will be happening so, because you can't fight with the decision of Allah. If Allah has decided respect for you, it will come to you. And if it has, because it's it, it is always like that. So, I, I stood with my decision. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, sister. Jazakallah khair for um, giving us your time today on the Naqabi Diaries. I really appreciate it. Mashallah, it's been really enjoyable in hearing your Naqab journey and mashallah is a very unique and different story mashallah thank, thank you so much I hope it will be useful for your listeners and I hope that whoever is going through whoever is um, facing any difficulty may that will be ease and I, I pray for everyone that they get permissions if they are facing any they get respect equal and they, they get um, love and they get acceptance and this is uh, not go uh, good which is happening around the world i listen i i i came across the news of snatching of the scarf and you know i was like depressed that why if uh, hijabi is not sn snatching or not scratching or not um, taking away your skirt then how can you is, uh, take away hijabi's hijab from the, yes, the, the head without permission so this is should be equal when you talk about freedom it should be freedom for everybody not only for you but should should be for hijabis and for the people who wear beards and who are um, sh changing their levels of their shalwar because just to please allah why are you afraid of all this it's not uh, any missile or any anything that is hurting you that it will come to you and it will kill you Whatever somebody is wearing, if you are you are wearing bikini and nobody is coming to you with a gun, so then why you are coming to hijabi and shooting them? So this is wrong. Of course, and this is wrong, and this this hurts me. And it I often talk about it, and I pray, and people around me also pray, and I I really 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 uh, appreciate your this um, effort that you are doing and uh, sharing the stories of hijabis. I am I am not an ideal story. I am not even a complete hijabi yet. Because I am in the middle, because I'm just wearing a hijab in shivar kameez, but I'm trying. And I will tell all people to try and uh, try to convince and whatever level, even if they are not, they can do one thing, which this just came to my mind. If they are not even allowed to wear hijab, they can change their wearing, like loose clothing, not transparent, not too much glittery, not too much appealing colors, not too much you know of the uh, kind of uh, um, those which appeal the opposite sex not those kinds of they can do this okay i don't like this dress i like loose clothing i don't think so that family will will force them that okay no you take size of our choice so they can buy uh, extra large or large size i i am uh, 
small to medium size but i wear extra large size yeah so you know, that makes a bit of a difference but yeah, so yeah. Maybe but that that is you know sometimes when i have to uh, why i don't have time i need to buy ready ready made from the market so i i asked them okay i need large or extra large they said no my jeans not of your size i said i know but i need it because my sleeves are long because my shirt is long so uh, extra large and large has a different size so they said okay aapko phir you will have to be like get them stitched from inside because it's very i said ah uh, yes i will get it stitched then i i use that so i will suggest your uh, listeners that if they are facing any problem that at least they can change their size of the cloth if they go to market they can use loose clothes and a uh, thicker material as per their temperature of the uh, country or their city mm-hmm. that's that's how and yeah. what we'll do is um if you can just give me your contact details or whatever you want to for your different organizations that you work for so you can uh, i can put it in the description box inshallah so that people yeah. will be able to um get in contact with you if they you know if they if they're in your proximity if you know you know your location so that you can help them inshallah jazakallah khair sister thank you so much Assalamu thank you alaykum. so much for taking me online and taking me uh, for this and jazakallah for this initiative jazakallah for listening to me so patiently i talk a lot yes. but uh, you gave me uh, freedom to talk alhamdulillah <laughs> thank you so much alhamdulillah it's been really enjoyable listening jazakallah khair sister assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh